Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6012. Item Number, SCP-6012 Object Class, Legally Uncontainable Special Containment Procedures, as no other containment is currently possible, all possible research should be focused on the circumvention of Contract 1991-JAYA 77,866,133. All personnel with experience covering loopholes in Tartarian contract law are highly encouraged to contact head researcher Bertolo. The body of Jod Yaxchel is kept in standard humanoid containment at Site 80. Medical intervention is ongoing. Description SCP-6012 is the slipperiness of all known forms of ice. In accordance with these laws of thalamic conductivity, any magic present in water is caught in the crystalline structure caused by freezing and radiated outwards. Upon being emitted from the ice, the thalamic energy ablates the surface of the frozen solid, turning its topmost layer into a thin and slippery layer of free-floating molecules. Discovery of SCP-6012's effects without prior experience in thaumatology would require in-depth knowledge of fluid dynamics, particle physics, and rheology, the study of how matter flows. With that in mind, efforts to observe and, if necessary, prevent scientific inquiry into the subject have rarely been necessary. It is, however, notable that every attempt to slow or mislead experimentation and research on the topic of ice's friction coefficient has failed. An investigation as to why is ongoing. Addendum 6012-1 Failed Containment Attempts The following list consists of consolidated summaries of all containment attempts regarding the research performed at Frederick Tudor Rheological Laboratories the only relevant institution with sufficient funding to pose a risk of discovering SCP-6012, in Wyeth, Massachusetts. Date Objective Result 2013-09-09 Remote Alteration of Stored Data System Did Not Respond to Remote Input 2013-09-12 On-Site Alteration of Stored Data Computer Terminal Did Not Respond to Input Agent was unable to properly reboot its software before extraction. 2013-09-24 On-site alteration of stored data by skilled computer technician agent was able to access the requested dataset. However, the terminal produced a loud tone, attracting civilian attention. Agent was extracted prematurely. Data was confirmed to remain intact. 2013-10-02 Automated Monitoring of All Email Correspondence Automated Monitor failed to respond and required several system reboots, deleting all recorded information in the process. At this point computer focus containment methods were halted due to continued failure. Technomantic analysis is pending. 2013-12-19 Sabotage of Machinery A Compromised Temperature Control Unit was successfully delivered to the site. It has yet to affect the laboratory's results in any detrimental fashion. 2014-02-25 Contamination of Water Supply Shipment of Laboratory Grade Distilled Water was replaced with commercial mineral water. Shipment was then halted due to weather. 2014-07-29 Infiltration Agent was presented to the facility as a research candidate based on mostly accurate credentials. During the initial entrance interview, however, said agent did not advance to full employment due to unforeseen anxiety in response to several rudimentary questions. 2014-10-25 Economic Manipulation A Foundation Shell Company contacted the laboratory under the guise of a non-profit organization to inquire about philanthropic donation. Within one business day, the company's assets were frozen. 2015-01-17 Assassination of Key Researcher Due to Dr. George Penman's History of Renal Cancer 
personnel management experts decided that an ethylene glycol-based solution would be the optimal method of removal. The agent responsible for dosing Dr. Penman slipped and fell outside the doctor's home, requiring immediate extraction. 2015-01-17 Indiscriminate aerial bombing of the laboratory and surrounding region containment attempt was aborted within minutes of its initiation. Head researcher Wirtz has been relieved of duty pending psychiatric evaluation. Addendum 6012-2 Results of Technomantic Analysis Raspi's Omicron Connective Technomancer on Foundation Payroll was able to identify a background process on the laboratory server specifically designed to subvert Foundation containment efforts. The process displayed distinct code signatures usually associated with the Tartarian bureaucracy. In addition to TX, Omicron was able to trace the process insertion code to the IP address of Jules Geristre, a local paralegal. Mr. Geristre was brought in for questioning. Interview Log Interviewed, Jules Geristre Interviewer, Head Researcher Peter Bertolo with TX. Omicron Assisting In addition to being a connective technomancer, TX. Omicron is one of 16 known living humans with a passable understanding of Cochitis, the legalistic language of the Tartarian bureaucracy used both for communication and articulation of contract law. Geristre, I would like a lawyer, please. That's not necessary. We just have a few questions for you. Geristre, I would like a lawyer, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Geristre. I think you misunderstand. Geristre, I would like a lawyer, please. Would a lawyer be able to explain why we traced malware found on the Tudor Rheological Laboratory server to your IP address? A moment of silence. Mr. Geristre's expression does not change. Geristre, I would like a lawyer, please. Mind if I cut in? Be my guest. TX. Omicron proceeds to speak in Tartarian Cochitis for 10 minutes. Mr. Geristre does not react. What was that? I said we know what you are. Every word uttered in Cochitis must be fully defined to minimize ambiguity. H.R. Bertolo begins to respond, but is interrupted by Mr. Geristre, who speaks in Cochitis for 5 minutes without pausing for breath. And what was that? Well, the first part was definitely a request for the presence of something. And the last part referred to an arbiter, I think, or some sort of mediation consultant. So he asked for a lawyer. More, summoned one, I think. Hey, are you okay? Both interviewers turn back to Mr. Geristre, whose left eyeball is swelling drastically. It pops spring HR bear to low TX. Omicron successfully evades, with vitreous humor. As Mr. Geristre's head falls silently to the interview table, a banded red worm pushes its head out of his ruptured eyeball and coils around his neck. It faces the interviewers. Hello there. I am a struggle modeled in legal counselor M211-Q2G7K9S2F4M9M0. I have been summoned to act as Arbocatus Diaboli for Mephistophilistic Contract Maintenance Agent M214-1 and AB8C9D1 by 2A0Q. H.R. Bertolo does not respond as he is busy trying to clear vitreous humor from his eyes. TX. Omicron starts to speak in Cochitis, but the worm interrupts with a wave of its head. Please, let's restrict this to Terran tongues for now. I'm sure you will agree that Cochitis does not lend itself well to succinct discussion. Thank God. May I ask what the trouble is here? My client was performing its duties well within the limitations defined in the Tartarus Foundation Agreement of 1983. It has prioritized both secrecy and human life while fulfilling his assigned contract. Your client was interfering directly with containment efforts. As outlined in Clause 83 Subclause 28B Paragraph 937 of said agreement, 
Such interference is allowed for contracts rated between 7 and essential by three separate Anubin contract analysis agents. Is it worth asking what ratings this contract got? 11. Notable. In Epsilon are its three current designations, well within the range aligned for interference. What? Those are completely... Okay, I would like to make a formal request for information regarding annulment procedures. For a contract of this status, I'm afraid the documentation of information requests alone would take decades to travel through the proper channels. You would be much better off reaching out to the original party. They would have considerably more sway. Oh, great. Who's the original party? Oh, I have no clue. H.R. Bertolo sits back with an audible sigh. But the Ptolemyan correspondence official assigned to the contract will know. I am in contact with it now. It should reach out to you forthwith. Okay, cool. Thank you. The worm nods and withdraws back into Mr. Geristray's head. Following established Tartarian protocols, the remains of Mr. Geristray were incinerated. Addendum 6012-3, Correspondence H.R. Bertolo received the following email at 7.06 a.m. the morning after Mr. Geristray was interviewed. 2. Peter Bertolo, Peter. Bertolo at site 80.spfoundation.int From Ptolemy and Correspondence, requests at main.ptolemia.9.tartarus.sticks Subject Requested information rate, contract 1991-JAI is 77,866,133. To whom it may concern, we have enclosed an abridged reproduction of contract 1991-JAI is 77,866,133 between the Tartarian bureaucracy as represented by Faustian Contract Initiation Officer M221-44Y1H686-1, and Dr. Jod Yakshal, DDS. For the purpose of your records, it is worth noting that Dr. Yakshal served on your O5 Council for an unknown period of time preceding the establishment of his contract. In addition, a sub sub clause of contract 1991 JAI 77,866,133 requires that I provide the following address in response to any foundation based queries for information. 1806 Favorite Lane, Iceboro, Richmond, Maine 04357. In the likely case that Dr. Yakshal is found at this address, it would be prudent to mention that the pact ink used in the composition of contract 1991-JAI is 77,866,133 was manufactured using approximately 16 ruach of soul acquired from Dr. Yakshal. The average adult human contains 18 ruach of soul with a standard deviation of 3 ruach, depending largely on diet and preferred genre of pornography. If he is still alive, his capability for conscious thought will be greatly diminished. We wish you the best of luck in your further inquiries into the matter. Your ally Ptolemyan Correspondence Official in 246-0J0091SQ288 at 6 Circle 9-3 The Tartarian Bureaucracy Attachment 1991-JAI-77866133.COC, 66.6 petabytes. Using a Cochitis compiler designed by TX. Omicron, the main clausal structure of the file provided was translated as the following. Signing Parties Tartarian Bureaucracy, hereafter known as TB. Dr. Jod Yakshal, DDS hereafter known as G. TB agrees therein to assume the following responsibilities. Prevent any individuals with knowledge of the thaumaturgic nature of ice from preventing the independent discovery of said nature. Prevent any agents working on behalf of individuals with knowledge of the thaumaturgic nature of ice from preventing the independent discovery of said nature. Upon request for information regarding this document, cooperate fully. 
upon request for information regarding this document, provide the specific data designated for this eventuality. G agrees therein to assume the following responsibilities. Provide TB with 16.58 Ruach of Seoul for the purpose of manufacturing packed ink and covering general operating costs. TX. Omicron's compiler is currently being modified to provide further detail. Addendum 6012-4, Retrieval On 2015-08-05, a retrieval team was dispatched to the address provided by the Ptolemyan correspondence official. Dr. Yakshul was sitting on the porch of the property upon approach. The remains of an NC-1991 camera, a long-term usage recording tool developed by Foundation Technomancers for use on extended explorations. It notably combined thaumaturgic circuitry with a small astatine-based power supply to extend both energy supply and memory by several months. Its production was discontinued after two years, as its unconventional components interacted to produce a high probability of interdimensional squelching when worn by a living creature, and its tripod were found in the bushes at the base of the structure. Dr. Yakshul was transferred to Site 80, where Iatromancer's thaumaturges that combine conventional medical procedures with magic-based remedies are currently attempting to reform his soul using what traces of it remain. The contents of the camera's memory are being transferred to a less volatile format. Addendum 6012-5 Video Log the following is the full transcript of the video recovered from the UTSI 1991 camera recovered along with Dr. Yakshul. Observational Log Transcript Begin Transcript Approximately 38 seconds of static. The image resolves to show Dr. Yakshul, a broad, dark-skinned older man with a short mustache and black-rimmed glasses. A pair of small Tartarian entities, later identified as Lamian resource management demons, stand on his shoulders. Their fingers glow a dull red as they methodically pull glowing strands of soul from Dr. Yakshul's ears, coiling them around their waists. I would like to apologize in advance if my, my train of thought goes a bit awry. What remains of my soul is flapping against the inside of my skull. It makes thinking, it makes thinking more taxing than usual. This is, this is a confession, of sorts. An articulation of motive. As I doubt I am in any state to, to present my case to you, this will have to suffice. A few moments of silence. Dr. Yakshul looks past the camera. I came here out of an unshakable sense of nostalgia, I'm afraid. My first, first real job was here, on the Kennebec. 1829, when I had my own name, and a less persisting form. You can thank my degree and current position for the latter. We would cut up the ice and float it down to storage. And from there on it would go, fighting back heat across the country. We'd feel good about that. About, about keeping the world in comfort. And then there was the flood. And the fire. And the war. And then the refrigerator, and we were, unnecessary. Another moment of silence. I should also apologize, I think, for forcing you to track me down through the Tartarian bureaucracy. There were probably other methods of achieving this result. I chose this one out of pity. As he speaks, he absentmindedly raises a hand to his left shoulder and taps the demon standing there on the back. It hisses and attempts to bite his finger. In the decade before they rebranded as the bureaucracy, Hell signed a total of 78 soul contracts. They saw their own impending obsolescence and fled into A, a self-made labyrinth of paperwork and meetings and endless phone tag. In the absence of actual souls, they pulp every scrap of torment from every interaction they have like a man dying of thirst wrings the sweat from his own underpants. I've lost the thread again, I'm afraid. Necessary. Hell is, is torturing itself, freezing itself in place to ignore that it is no longer necessary. Someday, the Foundation will do this as well. On the day we signed our accord with the princes of hell that had seated their swords for legal pads, I felt, I felt as though we were meeting the specters of our future. Desperate creatures in doomed roles. I saw the council as chancellors of a frozen people. Containers of every, every deviation from the status quo. After all, we cannot become obsolete if time does not move. But it must flow. Dr. Yaxchel pauses for a minute. 
the Kennebec River can be heard faintly in the background over the soft, silken hiss of the soul being extracted from his skull. I do not want you to think that I have championed ice out of some, some misplaced yearning for my youth. He was a scientist at heart, well before she was a thaumaturgist. Her laws of thaumic conductivity fit snugly within modern physics. They will be discovered independently, and the status quo will shift just a bit. How many artifacts do we hold that will be explained by the new science? How many containment cells will be emptied? And then... Dr. Yakshul's mouth opens and closes silently for a moment. The threads gathered by the demons on his shoulders have gotten thinner. I, I understand how you must be feeling. There is little more terrifying to us than a natural ending. It is human nature. We are selfish. We are vain. We must be important to someone. But this, this opening I'm creating for mankind, to let them come out from behind the veil into the light, it will create a better world. You will leave your offices abandoned as magic wreaths our cities. They will protect themselves from the things we would contain. The two demons hop down from Dr. Yaxchel's shoulders and walk out of frame. Strands of soul can still be seen extending from his ears, drifting gently in the breeze. I only, I regret, I only wish I could be there. To see it. He smiles, and his eyes drift shut. Several weeks pass. Besides the change in light and the movement of small animals, nothing happens. Dr. Yakshul remains motionless. After three weeks, a snowstorm produces winds strong enough to knock the camera over. The frame now captures Dr. Yakshul's chest and face from below, with the lower half of his body obscured. Time passes. Small creatures occasionally take shelter under Dr. Yakshul. His mouth has fallen open. Notably, scavengers have not yet attempted to consume his exposed flesh. Approximately five months after the beginning of the video, a pair of small white and gray birds construct a nest in Dr. Yakshul's open mouth. The birds have been positively identified as black-capped chickadees, which usually nest in tree cavities. This deviation from natural behavior has been reported to the Center for Anomalous Ornithology. Silver strands are visible in the structure of the nest, implying that Dr. Yakshul's remaining soul was used in its construction. Two days later, the female bird has laid an unknown quantity of eggs. The male brings her food often. The eggs hatch after 13 days of incubation. There are six hatchlings. Both parents perch on Dr. Yakshul's teeth to feed their children. A readout on the recording warns that the camera is low on memory. Sixteen days after hatching, one of the young birds climbs to the edge of Dr. Yakshul's mouth. As it hops out of its nest, the camera ceases recording due to lack of available memory. Addendum 6012-5 Relevant Correspondence The following email has been logged due to its relevant content as required by RISA Statute ID 9807-E. 2. Director Amalagi Director at Site 80. Foundation.int From Peter Bertolo, Peter. Bertolo at site 80. Foundation. Int. Subject Update on Project Permafrost. Let me be clear Project Permafrost is fucked. To start, the legal team can't find anything even resembling a loophole in the contract. They're keeping at it, but at their current rate of translation, they'll be done about 10,000 years from now. It doesn't help that we don't exactly have any expert advice on the subject anymore. The medical team is doing a little better, but I can't say that Yakshul will be able to help us anytime soon. Whatever patchwork soul they've got running the poor guy right now doesn't seem to allow for any sort of sapience. All we're getting out of him is birdsong. All in all, I'd say our biggest issue right now is morale. Even since before the thaumaturges all quit, it seems like we were throwing ourselves against a wall that isn't moving. Like we were pinwheeling our legs out on a frozen lake, going nowhere fast. If Omicron's countdown website is to be believed, based on the quantity and quality of data being produced, Tudor Labs will figure it all out within the next two years. The thaumaturgy forums are calling it the next ice age. 
I can hear the immortal bastard singing from my office. Please let me know if you have any questions. Until the thaw. H.R. Bear to Low. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts, leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations later.